What's up booktube? Welcome back. My name is Laura if you're new here and today I'm talking about all the books that I read in April. So remember back in January when I was like, this is my best reading month ever! And then in March I was like, no wait, this is my best reading month ever. Well, I've done it again. April was my best reading month ever, <laughs> in terms of page count at least. In April I read 12 books and DNF'd one, which gave me a grand total of 3,566 pages uh, as compared to last month where I read 3,485. So not much more, but still more. <laughs> so I'm very happy that I actually managed to read so much. I really have no idea what happened because like for January and for March I had like a week and a half off from work because of being sick, but in April that did not happen. I was working throughout the entire month but I still managed to read more. So I guess I'm just on a huge reading kick right now. But either way, this is going to be a long time filming so I'm just going to get right into it and I'll start with my DNFs. The one book that I DNF this month was unfortunately The Bone Spindle by Leslie Vetter. This is one of my most anticipated books of the year and I just did not vibe with it at all. I'm not really sure why. Um, like at first the, the two main characters were kind of annoying to me, especially Shane, the like axe wielding one. But like she was starting to grow on me. I got to around page 120 or so and I just still wasn't feeling it. Like the whole vibe was off for me. Like just everything just wasn't what I was looking for. I think I wanted a more like serious tone to it. Like I still wanted a fun whimsical fairy tale but there was just too much like absurd humor to it. Like they were trying to be too sarcastic and things which like I can like sometimes but it has to be done in a certain way and this just wasn't it for me. So unfortunately a DNF for me but maybe I'll try to get it at some point when I'm in like a different mood but we'll see. Moving on to the books that I did finish. The first one was Taksumi, an anthology of Arctic horror stories edited by Aviak Johnston. I don't know if I can technically count this one as read because I skipped a lot of it. This one I'm so sad about. The first story in this book was incredible. It, I, I was terrified. It gave me that like spine tingling, tight chest feeling of pure terror and then everything after that was such a letdown. I at least made it through half of all of the stories but a lot of them I ended up skipping because I just didn't care about them at all. They either weren't scary or they were just unnecessarily gory and I really don't like gore at all. There's a lot of body horror in this one and I just like it was very ick for me. I didn't like any of it aside from that first story. Everything after that was just so terrible and I'm so upset by it. I wanted to love this book and like the horror genre in general I always want to love it because I, because I love horror movies but I almost never like them in book form. So I keep trying to find horror books that work for me and I just haven't yet and I'm so sad about it. Next up was The Mermaid, The Witch, and The Sea by Maggie Takuda Hall. This one is a really interesting queer pirate story and I love pirate stories we all know this. So this one follows two main characters. The one character is a person known as Flora but also Florian. So Florian is kind of genderqueer I guess is what the is what they were going for here. It's kind of hard to explain how Florian's character works because uh, like she's a girl and like when she is thinking to herself and like her like internal monologue she calls herself Flora and she but when she and her brother went aboard this pirate ship as children in order for the crew to allow her onto the ship they they had to kind of like indict her as a man basically. So they had her kill somebody and from then on she was known as Florian and the whole crew calls him he. So yeah kind of complicated there um, but anyways so Flora and her brother are aboard this pirate ship. They are crew members and this pirate ship fronts as being a traveling ship for wealthy merchants. So they collect all their passengers and go off to sea and when they're far enough out they reveal that they are actually a slave ship and everybody aboard is being sold into slavery. So Flora is obviously not a good person because she is willingly doing this but it's what she has to do to survive. She grew up as an orphan with her brother on the streets and this was the only way to to secure a roof over the head and food um, and just be able to live in a really harsh world. And the people that they sell into slavery are the really rich people who never helped them, who turned a blind eye to her and her brother as they were starving children. That's kind of how she justifies it enough to be able to sleep at night is that you know there's there's no love lost for these people. They're in her eyes they're bad people. So it was a really interesting theme about morality and you know doing what you have to do to, to survive and all these things. But anyways I'm getting off topic. I'm trying to do this in office right now. But anyways so this time around Flora is asked to guard Evelyn who is a royal aboard the ship uh, who was being sent off to an arranged marriage which she does not want. But over the course of a few months at sea together these two very slowly start to fall in love with each other and they decide that they have to find a way to escape together. There is a whole lot more happening in the story. There's a 
mermaid involved, the sea is a character, there's a witch, obviously. There is so, so much happening. But it was such a fast-paced, interesting book with such fantastic characters and really interesting themes and everything. It was, it was so much fun. I did find the beginning to be a lot more interesting than the end of it. It felt a little bit too drawn out towards the end, and I was starting to get kind of bored towards the end of it. But overall, I still really enjoyed this book, and I would definitely recommend it. I ended up giving it three stars, maybe like a 3.5, I'm, I'm not too sure, but uh, but around there. So like, it was good, I enjoyed it, it just wasn't like fantastic, you know? But either way, I'm always down for a queer pirate story. After that, I read Across the Field of Starlight by Blue Delaquanti. This is a book that unfortunately suffered from being mismarketed. The tagline for this book is an epic sci-fi graphic novel romance between two non-binary characters as they find one another through time, distance, and war. So it's labeled as a romance. It is not. There is no romance in here between these two characters. So I went in expecting this like beautiful romance and instead I got a beautiful friendship which would have been just as good but I spent the whole book like waiting for the romance to kick in and it never did. So it was a bit of a letdown there. Whereas if it had just been marketed properly as a beautiful queer platonic friendship between these two people who have to fight through space and time and war and planets and they have galaxies apart but they find a way to get back to each other that would have been just as intriguing as a romance would have been so I don't know why they called it a romance. But either way it was still really good. It's a sci-fi graphic novel. Um, the art style was just incredible. I loved all of the characters and all the like really interesting technology that they had. There were a lot of really cool ideas going on in here. Basically these two characters are on opposite sides of the war. The one character is a soldier fighting to help liberate the people who are being colonized and their life is nothing but struggle and hardship and being told your whole life that you're only worth being alive if you can be useful. Whereas our other main character is part of a commune of kind of rebels. They have chosen to like distance themselves entirely from the war and they live in a sanctuary hidden from all the war. So again, a really interesting themes being explored in this book. I do wish that we got into know more of the other characters aside from just the one and I feel like the friendship between the two main characters wasn't explored enough that I didn't quite buy their chemistry and like I just didn't really understand why they were so attached. Like they met one time and then spent years and years and years just fighting desperately to stay in contact with each other and like I just didn't really understand why their connection was so deep after one meeting so I wish that had been explored more but either way I still enjoyed it and I gave it three stars. And then we had the start of Tome Topple and my first book for this was Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare. This is book two in the last hours. This was a lot of fun. It's kind of hard to explain what this book is about because it's the second book in a series, but this series is like the fourth series in a world. It's, it, there's a lot happening here. But basically we're following the children of the characters from the Infernal Devices. And like there's not that much plot happening in here, at least not for the first half of it. But even if there was more plot, I don't really care about it. I am honestly just here for all of the relationship drama and all the angst. That's all that I care about. All of the actual demon stuff and, the, and them being Shadowhunters, I don't care. I am just here for the romances because they're so angsty and just absolute bullshit that it's such a good time. So I really don't have much to say about this book, but I had a fantastic time reading it. I can't wait to see what happens in book three, and overall I gave it a 3.5 star. I also read River of Shadows by Karina Halley. This one is a adult fantasy romance that I found on Kindle Unlimited, and it was fantastic. Oh my god, this one was so good. It follows a young woman whose father has just passed away. Her father lives in Finland and she lives in America. So she travels to Finland for the funeral and discovers that her father's body is missing, and he might not actually be dead. Turns out her father is a shaman and he had traveled to the underworld and got captured by the god of death. So she and her father's apprentice have to travel through the underworld to try and find her father and hope that he's still alive. But when she does find him, the only way that death will release her father is if she stays in his place and so she agrees. So it's a like Beauty and the Beast retelling kind of thing. I had such a fun time with this one. I mention this frequently but I love mythology based fantasy books and the first half of this book is just them traveling through the underworld. So you get to see so many myths and legends and like learn quite a bit about the mythology of it and the author was saying that she did quite a lot of research for this book so I had such a fun time reading this one. I ended up giving it three stars because while I did really enjoy it uh, the plot was pretty cheesy sometimes and like some of the writing was not always great but overall concept was fantastic and I can't wait for book two. It's coming out later on in May so I'll probably be reading it like pretty much immediately because this book ends on a massive cliffhanger which the author did warn us about but I was still mad about it. <laughs> 
After that, I read A Dead Jane in Cairo by P.J. L. Clark. This one is a really interesting historical fantasy that takes place in a like steampunk alternate version of Cairo. And it follows our main character who is a detective for the like Ministry of Magical Stuff, basically. What's it actually called? The Ministry of Alchemy, Enchantments, and Supernatural Entities. In terms of plot, I don't think that I could really describe what happens in this book. It's kind of confusing for such a small book. It's like 40 pages or so. Basically, like there's some weird shit happening with the supernatural creatures. A djinn has committed suicide. There are like more ghoul attacks than usual and our main character is just trying to figure out what's going on. So yeah, plot wise, not my favorite. It was interesting in concept, but I wish that this book had been longer. That way it could be more fleshed out because it felt way too rushed. But the world building was incredible, especially for being so short and with so much going on. This author still managed to pack in so much beautiful world building and I had a great time in that aspect. So I gave it three stars. And then my second book for Tome Topple was Crush by Tracy Wolf. This is the second book in the Crave series. This one follows a main character whose parents have just passed away and so she's sent off to go live with her uncle who is the head of a super elite boarding school in the middle of Alaska. So off she goes to the school where she quickly learns that the school is not quite what it seems. I'll leave the synopsis there because there's so much happening in this book and honestly it is best if you just go in completely blind. Much like the first book, Crush was bad. It was such a bad book and I loved every second of it. It was so much fun. It was a wild ride from start to finish and I just couldn't get enough of it. This is a 700 page book. I read 200 pages the first day and then the next day I read 500 pages. Like I, I couldn't stop reading it. It was so freaking good and it has no right to be this good. It is a bad book. Like just point blank. It is not good but I love it so much. But yeah I'll stop gushing about it. I gave it four stars. It is just honest to God, such a good time. And if you just want a like really fun, ridiculous read, please pick up this series. It's so addictive, I love it. <laughs> After that was Lore Olympus by Rachel Smith. Smythe? Not really sure. <laughs> this one is a graphic novel and it's a modern day Hades and Persephone and it is beautiful. Like look at these colors in here. Like oh my god they're gorgeous. The illustrations are just incredible. I am obsessed with how beautiful this is. The actual story wasn't my favorite. I found a lot of the characters to be like really one-dimensional and pretty flat. Um, there were some good funny moments in here, but overall it wasn't my favorite thing ever. But I did still like it in terms of it being a very light, quick read. I don't know, like with the characters, all of the women just seem like such ditzy, kind of like vain women and like there's really no depth to any of them and then all the men are either like really sleazy just douchebags or himbos and there's really no in between. There's just no depth to the characters whatsoever and I wanted more from it in that sense but like I will for sure keep reading this series just for the art style to be honest but this one I also gave three stars. So close to the end here next up is Chef's Kiss by Jarrett Melendez. This one is also a graphic novel and it was an arc that I got back in February but I was an idiot and I didn't check and see uh, when this book was being published and therefore the arc would be archived. So I requested the book, got approved, and then realized that the book was being published the next day. So I only had like two hours to read it and I just didn't get around to it and then it was archived. But this book was finally available on script so I had a chance to read it and it was fun. I enjoyed it. It wasn't amazing but it was still pretty good. It follows our main character Ben who had just graduated from university with an English degree and he is expected to go into a writing career immediately. But he just fails miserably at all these interviews because he has no professional experience. But he is desperate for a job and some money so he ends up taking a job at a very eccentric restaurant where he does not need any experience and his co-worker just happens to be really freaking cute. So this book was really funny like honestly it was too funny. There were so many like ridiculous absurd things happening in this book. Like for example there's a pig who's a character in this book. So in order for Ben to get hired on full-time at the restaurant he has to go through a series of challenges but the head chef who is a ridiculous weirdo he judges whether or not the challenge was a success by feeding the food to the pig and if the pig approves then he, then he's good. And every time the pig has his food he just gets weirder and weirder. There's one time where he eats the food and then he's like lying back with like hazy post-sex eyes with a cigarette in his mouth like it's just it's so stupid <laughs> and like it was unexpected absurdity in this book which like wasn't a bad thing but it was a bit too much because I felt like there were times where 
the author prioritized humor over actually getting to know the characters. So overall it was still a good time and I would definitely recommend it just for like a really cute quick read. I gave it 3.5 stars and then the last two books for April are both part of the same series and those are Deal with the Demon and The Demon Next Door by Chase Verity. These are both part of the Loved by the Demon series which I found on Kindle Unlimited and I had such a good time with them. They're both very short novellas, they're around 100 pages each and they are just ridiculous good fun. The first book follows a single mother of two kids who is just down on her luck. She is just fired from her job and she's just trying so hard to keep her kids happy and fed and everything. And one day she finds a QR code taped to her door and she scans it and then a demon appears in her kitchen and says that he is there to give her a success. So he has 28 days to give her some kind of success and she can use him in whatever way she wants. Most people tend to go for like posting a picture online and becoming like famous that way or killing him and having the government pay them for their silence kind of thing. But what she wants to do is have him kind of take care of the house the chores, the cooking and everything, and take care of her kids who love him while she can go job hunting for a full-time job that will support them long term. But of course, while they're together, they end up falling in love and things go from there. <laughs> and book two also follows a recently single mother who has just had a demon and his son move in next door. Her son and his son end up becoming best friends really quickly, so the two of them spend a lot of time together. And then of course, romance ensues from there. <laughs> so both of these books are super simple. There's like really not a lot happening here, but they're just like like really fun. Like when I go on Kindle Unlimited, this is the kind of thing that I'm looking for. I don't want a like really serious, well thought out fantasy. I just want to have a good time. And that is exactly what these did. So both books I gave three stars. The writing and the plot aren't the best, but the stories themselves just put a smile on my face and that's really all that I'm looking for here. All right, so those are all the books that I read in April. Let me know if you've read any of these books or tell me what your favorite book of April was. I would love to hear your thoughts. But in the meantime, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.